Who is it going to be then, Bruno or Lewis? I don't know. I think I think public opinion is Lewis, and I'm going with that. But I'd love to see Frankie do it, you know? Known as the most loved sportsman to ever come out of the UK. But fighting back and he's hurt Tyson. He's hurt Tyson. And Tyson knows it and he's going for him. Frank Bruno was the heavyweight hope of Britain in the 1980s and 1990s. That was a good left hook and it's taken everything out of Jameson. His leg came up, his right leg came up as he got a hit. And the following punch sent him crashing down and that... I just thank God I got this one out of the way, if you know what I mean, Harry. Seems to have sickened him of the game and that punch, the left hand, will most certainly... Bruno's fights were star-studded affairs that the hottest celebrities attended. A minute to go and he's signaled retirement. Everyone's rooting for Bruno here. Of course they are, he's a Londoner and I'm a Londoner so he's got a... Do you know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> Bruno delivered tons of excitement in the ring as he was known for his thunderous power and huge heart. against Williams. Good right right here by Bruno. Right hand. Bruno has Lewis in serious trouble. Your punches, I thought, at, at a boxer point of view, knowing your layoff, it was tremendous, That's accurate, kind of and I'm very impressed. Very kind and I look forward to meeting you in the future. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you as well. Thank you very Thanks much. Nice. I think yes. you're a great man. Thank you. Same to you, Mike. In this video, we take a look at Bruno as a fighter and as a man and we follow his career as he desperately tries to achieve his dream, becoming a world champion. I'm gonna knock him out so hard he's got to pay to get back in. Get in there, Frank. I'm 30 now, I'm not no great years yet, but I'm maturing. Got another 10 years in you yet? I don't think so, Harry. I might have, I might have, I might have 10 years to use me Black and Decker, but that's about what I think. <laughs> Frank, well, well done tonight. Thank you very much, and all you listeners. Take it easy, and the viewers, yes. <laughs> The eagerly awaited professional debut. Of Bruno turned professional in 1982 and he quickly got a reputation as a knockout artist. In his first fight, a sharp right hand drops Guerra and he is hurt. Well, I think that might have been a right hand that did the damage there first and foremost. Right hand followed by a left. Bruno taking a long look at him while he was waiting in the neutral corner there. And Guerra's down from that one. That's the right hand again and this is what the boxing fraternity like to see. A heavyweight who can hit. Bruno found it easy to land his right hand, and the fight probably went on a little too long, if you ask me. Bruno setting him up with the left jab there. Down he goes again. Well, that punch seemed to land across the top of the head. And I don't think he wants to get up from that one. And he's out. So, a knockout win for Frank Bruno. The long-awaited professional debut arrived. right hand and the left hand and Bruno very much the new young wonder of the British heavyweight division Bruno's jab was on point in this fight against Abdul he literally launched Abdul out of the ring with his right uppercuts inside do with the lift and Stevenson holding up on the middle rope and comes out over it and his foot appears in my face and he's not going to make it back. No way he's going to make it back and the crowd are beginning to boo and he's counted out. Notice the opponent's legs are still shaky after the fight. But he just tipped out of the ring. After a few hard body shots, dominating his man all the time. Bruno throws a long combination and drops Gibbs with the left hook. Bruno has big power in either hand. If he lands clean on somebody, there is usually a big reaction. Bruno could also be pretty effective with these short clubbing punches on the inside. I think he's just a very heavy-handed guy in general. These clubbing shots don't look like much, but throughout his career, they stiffen the legs of many an opponent. And I think Roland Dakin is going to stop it, and he is in the fourth round. But he was taking a bit of punishment, and he'd been bowled over by a good... Uh, right and left combination from Bruno. Need Mead, of course, is the current British heavyweight champion. And Bruno will do well to stop him because Moore's only been stopped five times in 50. In his next fight, Bruno really hurt Moore with his jab before using his double jab to land a crushing right hand on the top of the head. The punch is left on the right. Oh, that was a good combination for Bruno, and he was quick for a big man. I've taken a few punches in that part of the head, and it really hurts. It stuns you and disorients you, but doesn't knock you out. Finish this, and he's got him. That's all over. 
Notice Moore's legs are still shaky after the fight. Any of those, because Moore is a really veteran performer. Now just look at those two punches, the long left and then the finishing right hand. George Scott was out of his league against Bruno and clubbed to the canvas fairly quickly. And Scott already covering up and going down. And looks extremely hurt. Oh dear. Bruno comes in with a lot of feints and sets up a clean right hand, which puts him down again. And he's got him again. Scott simply can't take his punches. I think the referee should stop the fight here. Scott has no chance. Uh, one or two opponents already have met Bruno. They lose heart very quickly. He's had two one-round wins already, Bruno. This might be the third. He's still got half a minute to finish it. Scott doing nothing but covering up, and Sid Nathan's seen enough. He's decided. Eventually, the referee casually stops the fight before Scott gets obliterated. Five. And this is uh, how it all finished, with Scott trying to cover up and really doing nothing except trying to keep himself from real trouble. Bruno's double jab to set up the right hand was one of his go-to combinations. Mm, mitgenommen. Bruno's jab was a tremendous weapon for him. Notice Bruno's footwork here as he throws a combination while he's continually moving his feet. In the second round, it was just a matter of time. Bruno looked classy here. A good left to the body and a sharp right hand ending proceedings. Yeah, yeah, that's fast. Well-known heavyweight Joe Bugner was in the crowd to scout Bruno at his next fight. Once again, Bruno's jab was on point early. His right uppercut looked dangerous, and the opponent knew he was in trouble. Bruno seems to be hitting him absolutely at will. Oh, he's got it. Bruno comes over a lazy jab with a very fast one-two here. This is how it happened at the start of the second round. Barely 20 seconds in. Well, look at that right hand driven right through to the back of his head. You won't see a better right hand than that. The man had gone completely. And all that has come about from one brief moment of destruction. Twisted his leg, hurt himself, and split his nose. All that done with one right hand from this sensational youngster, 21-year-old Frank Bruno. Joe Bugner had some backhanded compliments for Bruno after the fight. You know, I, I'm not going to knock the young fella because he's um, obviously very, very raw. But, oh. uh, well, he's only had a few fights. Exactly. I mean, seven or eight fights. So all. you can't judge him, but uh, he certainly looked good. Seems to have... Uh, you now, know, would you like to have taken that right? Um, I don't think he would have got me with that right hand, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> different thing altogether, yes. Absolutely. You wouldn't have been standing around game. waiting no, to and, take it. Uh, right. I hope he improves and I hope... Uh, he doesn't get knocked off in the meantime. And I hope your comeback continues to go well. Thank you again, Harry. In Bruno's next fight, there was a loud scream of terror from the opponents after Bruno lands his right hand. Defeat <laughs> seems to have sickened him of the game, and that punch, the left hand, will most certainly sicken him again. Round one. Up at seven. A minute to go, and he's signaled retirement. He can't go on. Butzbach quits right away. He felt the power of Bruno and wanted no more. One punch destroyed all ambitions, and Bruno does it again. Bruno now had a reputation for early knockouts, but he was pretty patient. In this fight, his patience and timing led to a classy finish. A well-timed right hand landed over a jab, landed flush on the chin. And he weighs just over 16 stone. Five seconds and his legs have gone oh it's all over quickish yet 40 seconds on my watch i thought the stoppage was good akuna wobbled after he stood up and i think the referee had no choice but to stop it good right hand there's no doubt about that it's just a pity that we can't find one or two people who can stand up to them 
I think that would have taken an awful lot of people out. Well, Akuna went six rounds with Bugner just over two years ago. Joe Bugner is making a comeback. The Bruno hype was now starting to take effect. He was now a hero to young kids. Bruno had an opportunity to display more of his skills in this next fight. Whenever Bruno gets in the ring, there's that old electric surge goes through the audience. Lithgow stood up to a good right hand and showed decent punch resistance. There's the first right from Bruno, and uh, I think Lithgow rather felt that one. Here it comes, and Lithgow took that well because one or two of uh, Bruno's recent opponents have been on the floor from punches not as good as that. After some fine jabbing, Bruno landed some clean right hands. This uppercut left hook combination was beautiful. The uppercut, he showed it. Lithgow's face was marked up, and the corner stopped the fight in the fourth round. I think it was clear that Lithgow had no chance of winning, so the stoppage was okay. In the end, there was one beautiful uppercut from Bruno. He said he'd been practicing it. Here it is. Look at that. Strengthened his man up, followed with the left hook. He wasn't giving me a hard fight, but I, I reckon I would have caught up with him at the end of it because his face was getting gashed and his nose was bleeding and he's cutting over the right and the left eye and cut on the cheeks. And I thought I would have leaned on him and a few more uppercuts and he would have been finished. Not give you too much chance glad of punching. He, he did go four rounds with me because if I would have knocked him over in one round, people would have gone, ah, he's a knocking over stiffs again, you know, <laughs> or something like that. So I had to entertain him a little bit. Now, what about Joe Bugner? I mean, uh, everybody Bugner. wants to see that right. because obviously the new boy and the old stager, it makes a perfect fight. Well, what do you, uh, do you feel feelings, you're ready for him? My feelings about Joe Bugner, I think I should be ready for him within two months of fighting Joe Bugner. And I think I would stop him within five rounds, to be quite honest. Not being flash, just being straightforward. Really? You'd stop him in five rounds? In five rounds. I hope he's listening to that. He'll probably be on the phone in a minute if he hears that. <laughs> Bruno demonstrated his hard body shots in his next fight. That was a crushing body blow there. Brutal body shots hurt the opponent and made him quit. Oh, that man's ribs are really suffering. He's had enough of it. He's hurt. He certainly hurt. That really was a damaging body punch. The right hand to the rib cage. He took a headshot afterwards as well. But he took that right hand to the left rib cage two or three times before in the contest. Can Bruno beat Buckner's performance against Winston Allen? That is really what this fight is all about. Bruno's chin was tested for the first time in his professional career in his next fight as he absorbed some flush right hands to the chin. Winston Allen, this dangerous man from Wales. There's the right hand that Allen's dangerous with, and that might well be the best punch anybody's hit Bruno with in his pro career so far. And he took it well, and he still came forward. Didn't seem to feel it, and that might discourage Winston Allen. It would discourage me, I can tell you. Bruno wasn't happy at getting tagged like that and responded by opening up with every punch he had to get the stoppage. Men like Buckner. Good punches from Bruno and Allen's taking them well and coming on. But his expenses have gone all over the place. His gum shields up and it's stopped in the second round. And Bruno has done it one round faster than Buckner. Oh. <laughs> Well, this Bruno Bugner confrontation out of the ring is becoming quite something. First big right thrown by Winston Allen. It was a good punch, and uh, Bruno took it very well. He didn't even shiver, and he's proved his point. Bruno came out fast in his next fight, and Eddie Nielsen didn't know what was hitting him. And Bruno's going for a very quick win indeed here. Yeah. Now, can Nielsen weather this? He said he could take anything that Bruno threw, but he can't. 30 seconds on the clock. Sid Nathan counting into his ear. Up at eight. Bruno just kept punching and battered Nielsen to the canvas with solid right hands. Be all over in the first. Joe Bugner took five rounds to beat Nielsen. Never had him down like this. Nielsen's up quickly. Sid Nathan looks at him. On you go, still not a minute on the clock. Bruno's got good variety in his toolkit, but I'd like to have seen more body shots in this fight. 
Nielsen has decent head movement, and Frank is missing quite a few punches. I think good hooks to the body here would work well. With 35 fights behind him, doesn't know where he is or what's hitting him. Bruno upright, a giant. Nielsen a big man, but crouching over, and taken with a right hand early in the third. And he looks to his corner, his eyes gone, and New Sid Nathan says that will be enough. And there's a tremendous cut appeared above Nielsen's right eye. All over, uh, third round, two rounds faster than Joe Bugner managed it. Bugner was here to see it. Bruno does it again, 14 in a row. Notice Bruno feints a jab, and Nielsen goes to parry it with his left hand. This leaves him open to the wide hook. Really nice move from Bruno there. That created a terrible split above Nielsen's right eye. Frank, well done. Number 14. Yeah. Eh? Don't last too long, do they? No, he was a hard customer than Nielsen. You know, he could bang and he's pretty experienced. And, you know, he's a good, good opponent for me. You look as though you might have him over in the first minute. Yeah, I thought I might have, but, you know, the fight game's a very strange game. You know, anything could happen. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. I've been watching it a long right. time. <laughs> No, it was a good win in the end, wasn't it? You slowed down a bit and took your time. Well, I slowed down because I went like a flyweight at the first round. I had to right. pace myself and try to rock a little bit of rhythm and everything. But I thank God I won, Harry. Would you like to see what you did in the final round there? Yeah. But just have a look at our monitor and we'll show it you again. This is that tremendous right hand. Yeah, he split his eye open. It did, yes. yeah. Not only put him down, but it did the eye. Right. You must have been, you knew all about that eye in the first place. I mean, it, well, I knew about the it. eye and I knew, you know, he was a tough opponent, so... I wanted to destroy him, but I went a bit too hasty at first, but I thank God I destroyed you know him. Joe Bugner was here tonight. Yeah. What, you, what do you think saying, he thought of it? He's saying two rounds and I'm saying five rounds. The time has come to move him out of the novice class and find opposition that will test him. Scott Lido brought a lot of experience to the ring. And Wembley really does come alive as Bruno gets into the ring. He was a former heavyweight title challenger. He had lost to Larry Holmes three years earlier. He had also had a draw with Kenny Norton the year before that. Bruno's jab was on point in this fight. To fold up too fast. George Foreman, Leon Spinks, Ken Norton, Mike Weaver. At the end of the first round, Bruno dropped Ledeau with a nice short left hook. And over goes Ledeau at the end of the first round. And the bell comes, and the count will continue, but he's up on his feet. And Bruno's big thumping jabs are taking him full in the face. The jab beatdown continued. The big left of Bruno's goes straight in. The left jab is one of the main things that we worked on. Ledoux struggling to maintain some sort of credibility here. And that eye is looking quite nasty. And Larry O'Connell wants the uh, blood wiped away so he can get a closer look at it. Bruno just pieced up his face with the jab and the fight had to be stopped on cuts. I think Larry O'Connell is saying he can't go on, and that is exactly what he's saying in the third round. Just under two minutes of round three. Former heavyweight king Floyd Patterson, who had spent some time in the UK training Bruno for this fight, was very impressed. Future now. Well, I think he has a very bright future in front of him. Uh, tonight, he showed me something he didn't show me in the gymnasium. Uh, although we practiced it quite a bit the last boxing session, I didn't see it, uh, but he kept his left hand a lot higher, and he threw a lot more left jabs than he did in the gymnasium, a lot more. And I had told him that the jab would be the most effective punch with Scott Ledoux, and he listens. Therefore, I give him a very good chance uh, of making it to the top, but one thing I want to express, he's got to come to America to get boxing. The sparring here is no good. Uh -huh. I see, you only learn Really, when you box guys on your level or guys that are better than you, then you really strive to get ahead. Uh, the kind of guys he's boxing, he's much better than they, and he doesn't learn anything. In fact, he gets careless with them. But all the same, we've got a good young heavyweight prospect. You have a very good prospect, yes. I would say uh, certainly you have a definitely a very good prospect. Bruno was improving his jab from fight to fight at this point, and it would become his biggest weapon as he moves up in class. Jab from Bruno. Notice the beautiful uppercut here, which virtually ends the fight. Bruno's philosophy, despite uh, some of the criticism he takes about uh, stopping men quickly and not gaining the experience, that's what he wants to do. He just likes to stop fights. Down goes punches. It was the uppercut there that did it. And he might not make the 
cut here. Just about recovered, but he doesn't look too healthy. In goes the right hand again, and the referee will stop it. And punches is all over the place. Again, I thought the referee should have stopped it after the first knockdown. Futches was gone after the uppercut. Frank Bruno, he went into round five, and he had a little test. Bruno's next fight was his American debut against tough Mike Jameson. The world heavyweight scene, this is the country in which he has to really look good. And this fight tonight, is, uh, or this afternoon, is vitally important. Bruno delivered a vicious knockout with a lead left hook and a brutal uppercut. That was a left hook and it's taken everything out of Jameson. His leg came up, his right leg came up as he got a hit, and the following punch sent him crashing down. And that, I think, is going to be the end of this fight. Bruno has just shown the American public what he can do with a punch. Lawless is delighted. That is an amazing win. He threw two quick punches, and he knocked everything out of Jameson, who's also cut into the bargain. Notice the leg of Jameson involuntarily lifts up and twitches after the left hook. And he's still on the floor, Jameson. There's the left hook. His leg cut. There's the leg in reaction coming up. And that following right uppercut as he was about to go down took him out absolutely cold. They were two terrifying punches. And he's cut as well. And Bruno, naturally enough, looks back a little anxiously at the man who's still on the canvas. One thing about Bruno, he has legit dynamite in either hand. That's the first terrifying left hook. The reaction to that is extraordinary. I once saw Ingemar Johansson in a similar trouble against Floyd Patterson. And as he was just about going down, Bruno let the right uppercut go. I think the first punch might have finished him, but the second one put it quite terribly beyond doubt. That was an extraordinary finish. Well, if ever anybody wanted a demonstration of what Big Frank can do, there it is. And he's done it in front of the American public. They must have been two of the best punches you've ever thrown. I think so, Harry, yeah. But I just think God's from. It's a speed on. One came, yeah. you know, so quickly after the other. You had enough time, quick reaction, to get him as he was about to go down. Yeah. That was tremendous. Thank you, Harry. Anyway, more fights in America for you, maybe? Well, in the near future, I hope, you know? Harry. You must fancy a chance over here. I do fancy my chance. I'm getting confident every time, not being flesh or nothing, but every time I'm stepping into the ring, I feel, you know, good and I feel the combinations and the rhythm coming. Yeah, nice yeah. one, James. Yeah. Thanks a lot, yeah? Nice one. Can I just say hello to my girlfriend, oh, Laura? Why are you going? My baby, Where Nicola, at home. Hello, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Mum. Hello, Mum. Well done, Frank. Bruno's next fight was a bit of a mismatch. Small man for heavyweights. They grow big these days, and Shark is only 13 11 and just under six feet tall. And he's complaining that Bruno hit him on the back of the head. He outweighed Bill Sharkey by 25 pounds, and it showed. And over goes Sharkey. Fairly predictably, I would have thought. Flat on his face, and almost certainly flat out. Yes, he is. All over. Two minutes and ten seconds on my watch. And Sharky was hanging all over him. And up comes the right. That's precisely how you put Jameson away in Chicago. But there's no doubt at all that Bruno is a sensational young prospect. And Britain is lucky to have him. Just look at the shoulders on this man Cummings. You can see why they call him Jumbo Cummings. Jumbo Cummings was an experienced heavyweight who had gone the distance with Joe Frazier just three years earlier. He had also recently gone the distance with world-class Tim Witherspoon. We will be hearing more about Witherspoon shortly. Cummins was a tough guy. He had served 12 years in prison for serious crimes. The first round was a feel-out round for both guys, until the last second of the round. Oh, what a good right hand right on the bell. Oh, Bruno's gone. He's gone. He's out on his feet. One punch, a right hand, and he doesn't know what's hit him. And suddenly the young prospect has come unstuck. Oh, how he's come unstuck. One big right hand from Cummings. And if that bell hadn't come up... Bruno was absolutely out on his feet and extremely lucky that it happened at the end of the round. Was what one socking right hand brought him to a standstill. His legs are gone. And I don't know, he got himself back to the corner. Look at that. Fell into the arms of Lawless. This put a big dent in his reputation because it just looked so bad. His boots. Cummings jumped on Bruno at the start of the second round. But Cummings knows what he has to do now. 
and it looked like a matter of time before Bruno was knocked out. And Bruno's hanging on desperately, but he looks as though he's gone to me. The young man doesn't know where he is. Bruno was always a guy who was very vulnerable when he was hurt. He didn't really have the best survival skills. Bruno somehow hangs on. He's still not gone down. It may be only the ropes holding him up. Cummings is just sloppy here. He's falling into clinches and not giving himself enough room to get punches off. If Bruno recovers from this, it will be a miracle. Bruno starts to get his legs back and the crowd goes wild. Round. Bruno survives by a thread. Bruno gets back into the fight and it's his powerful overhand right that has a big effect. Cummings wishes he'd saved it a bit longer. Can the big American survive it? He's got it. First knockdown. Round seven. What a sensation. He's made it to his feet, but his legs have gone, and he's counted out. Boy, Jumbo Cummings has been stopped for the second time in his life, and faster than he's ever been stopped before. And Bruno is the hero of the night and of the year. Tremendous right arm from Bruno here. He found him at last. Look at that. Took him on the side of the chin. And I think from that moment, Cummings had gone. But somehow he went on. <laughs> now, what about it? You're the hero of the night, Frank. It, yeah. must, be, it must be wonderful to come it's back like that. It's beautiful these supporters to support me and stay behind and watch me. It's beautiful. As, as long as I can keep him here, you know, all the time. When you got in the ring, you got a fantastic reception. Beautiful, wonderful. I thank God for the crowd, you know, because they're, they're nice, you know what I mean? Wonderful. Now, we all said that you needed a test, and that yeah. man really gave you one, didn't he? He did now, give he's me a, a strong test, you know? They're stronger than him, more younger opponents than him, but he was a little bit old, but he was good because he knew the game, you know, and he's, he's hardly ever been stopped. He's only been stopped once. He's a good opponent. Twice now. Right, yeah. Harry. <laughs> Walter Santamore came out dancing. We'll see. best uh, result was to beat the famous American heavyweight Ernie Shavers. Notice this big wild swing from Santa Moore. Bruno started letting combinations go on his moving opponent. And dropped him heavily at the end of the third round. And he's trying to rough Bruno up. Oh, over he goes right on the bell to end the third. Santa Moore on the deck. So Bruno's handling himself well here. Another thunderous right hand lands as Santa Moore doesn't protect himself inside. Oh, he's got him a right this time, and I don't think Santa Moore's going to make this. He's teetering on the edge of the ring, and he's never going to get up from that. The right got him. Well, he's made an effort, but he hasn't beaten the count. And Bruno has knocked him out alongside me. How do you feel that went tonight, Frank? Well, he's a very tricky and awkward um, customer. Des, you know, that's what I needed for the experience, you know, to hold me. And inside, he was holding me and stopping me from uppercutting him, left hooking him, you know. No, Sorry. Yeah. I was trying to uppercut him and over the top. He was a tricky, he's, as you can see, his arms all over the place, you know. And I caught him over the top with it. The round before that, I caught him at the end of the round and he got up. But... He went down and he stayed down for a nine count. There's, if I, I, weren't, I was a little bit still rigid and a bit stiff, but with more fights, I'll get rid of that. There's. Argentinian heavyweight champion Juan Figueroa came over to the UK with the reputation as a good outside boxer. The heavyweight champion of his country. It wasn't long before Bruno detonated a missile on his chin. And a right hand puts his man down just under one minute from the start. And he doesn't look as though he's gonna get up. He can't make it, he's stunned, and he's counted out, and I make it 67 seconds. Bruno's done it again. That is win number 21 in a row, and the man was simply no match for him. The first right hand put paid to Juan. And the replay will show that Bruno was very accurate with his punch landing on the point of the chin. That's why I got such a big reaction. 
But where does all this leave Bruno in world terms? Let's have a look at the world. Tim Witherspoon and Greg Page fought for the WBC belt, which had been vacated by the great Larry Holmes. Witherspoon won a close decision, and he became WBC champ. As the top contenders, with Bruno down at number 16. And new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, terrible Tim Witherspoon. Bruno fought up-and-coming bone crusher Smith next. His left is dominating uh, the bone crusher. I can't believe he hasn't crossed over. Bruno was a big favorite. Bruno bothering him with that left hand. Bone crusher doesn't seem to know how to block a jab. He controlled the fight with his jab and won most of the rounds. Bruno, Bruno able to just pop that jab in there with impunity. Nothing going on Bone Crusher's jab. He's just sort of pawing it out. Frank Bruno is dominating with his boxing skill. His jab has been uh, controlling the action and, of course, contributing a great deal to the fatigue of Bone Crusher, who's looking for his one good shot. Bruno was heading for a comfortable win. Counterpunch by Bruno. Seems to have Bone Crusher in trouble and trying to move away. And Bruno back with a chopping right, but he did not hurt Smith. But Bone Crusher landed a beautiful left hook in the 10th round, and Bruno was in major strife. Oh, good left hand by Smith! And he hurt Bruno! Here it is again. Bruno's hurt, he keeps getting hit. His hands are down, the referee's gonna stop it. Notice how terrible Bruno is at surviving while hurt. And James Bone Crusher Smith at this point not No clinching, no blocking, no slipping, ducking, or rolling. He's just standing there taking shots. So much for the heralded Frank Bruno. You will watch, he has his hands down and is totally defenseless. After this punch, his hands are down. There's one, two, three, four, five. Anywhere in here that could have stopped it. Six, seven. Finally, Harry Gibbs steps in seven. Incidentally, the uh, referee, Harry Jacobs, confused people by uh, picking Keller up after uh, one of the knockdowns. We attempted to uh, talk with the referee, but the British Boxing Union does not permit interviews. This has got to be the biggest thrill of your life. Yes, sir. He had me probably running me crazy with that jab. The best jab I've ever been in front of. In Bruno's comeback fight, Ken Lakutsa was dispatched with some clubbing rights. Hit him and he may not make it. It's all over in the second round. Right hand hit him, it seemed, somewhere around the back of the head. And the A comfortable win over Jeff Jordan followed. All one way traffic. And Sid Nathan has now seen enough. And Jeff Jordan, quite rightly, is rescued from further punishment. Cut above the left eye and being punched from pillar to post around this Albert Hall ring. Never had a chance. A short right hand completely discombobulated Lucien Rodriguez. Snappily at the moment, and he's hurt Rodriguez, and Rodriguez is over. With 30 seconds of the first round remaining, and he's badly hurt. Badly hurt. Is he going to make it? He's only coming up very slowly at nine, and he can't go on. It's all over. That's amazing. Rodriguez is stopped in the first round by Bruno. And that's the first time Rodriguez has been stopped for six years. Rodriguez was a solid, durable heavyweight who had gone the distance with Larry Holmes recently. So this was an impressive showing of power from Frank. The most astonishing result Bruno's ever had, in which Rodriguez was unable to recover within 10 seconds. It's gone. Well, where has it gone? Here it comes. Now that's high up on the head. He's hit him up on the forehead and he's hurt him. That punch hit him up on the forehead, it seemed to me. And yet, he couldn't recover from it. He's taken one on the back of the neck going down. Bruno fought for the European title against Anders Eklund next. Bruno's sharp jab dominated the fight. And having to concede 20 pounds to the Swedish giant.
and Bruno at the moment catching him with everything including good left jabs the crowd chanted his name Bruno certainly moving around the ring quite neatly he's given the big man from Sweden a taste of what's coming and he's already beginning to look very shaky Bruno opened up with a right hand inside which hurt Eklund badly that was the first really big one that connected and Eklund hangs on for dear life he almost went and the legs have gone Bruno is just one big right away from victory here but the giant is hanging on inside oh and the bell has come not a moment too soon for Eklund oh. Another 30 seconds and it might have been all over. Let's have another look. The first time Bruno had really caught up with him with the right. Look at that. Came chopping in over the top and suddenly Eklund, another one all over the place. Didn't know where to go. A sample of what Bruno can do to men. That wasn't the one that really did the damage. That was the one. It caught him lower down on the jaw. Bruno jumped on Eklund at the start of the next round and got the finish. And this crowd sensing that Bruno could be on the edge of victory here. He's got him again with the right and a second one in his hand. Right at the start of the fourth round, 10 seconds in. Is he going to beat the count? I don't think he is. He's not coming up. And Bruno is the European champion and he's made his mark in the world. Eklund just couldn't handle those cuffing inside shots. And he's only 23. And he's done it in the opening seconds of the fourth round. You can hardly do any better than that. Bruno was now the European champion. Lawless, the manager, acclaims him as well. He set him up in the third and he finished him in short order at the start of the fourth. My lords, ladies and gentlemen. My lords, ladies and gentlemen. Eklund, having been counted out after 20 seconds of round four, the winner and new heavyweight champion of Europe is Frank Bruno. All the punches what he caught me with, I knew that they were going to come. I was trying to exhaust himself out because I knew I, I had to go more than three, one round tonight, you know, because he's a tough boy, you know. I was trying to set him up, jab him, because he knew the jab was coming all the time. But I wanted to sneak it over the top. I did sneak over the top, but he's a craftsman, you know? He tries to hold and grab you like an octopus, you know? Like, you can see there, but I just wanted to but just destroy didn't, him. But you yeah, didn't let him go. Once gonna... you had him going, you didn't yeah. let him go. Right, Harry. The heavyweight seems wide open at the minute for Frank, and I think he can become the champion of the world if he, if he works hard enough, and I'm sure he'll, he'll do that. The heavyweight division was in a state of flux at this time, and it looked like Bruno had a legitimate chance of winning a title. The champion there, Pinkland Thomas, and yeah. the International Boxing Federation with the world champion Mike Spinks, Spinks the yeah. man who's just ended that long reign right. of Larry Holmes. I've seen box against Larry Holmes, and I see some of his defense, and I know how he trains, and I know what sort of fighter he is, and he's a very good fighter, but I think he's a light heavyweight, and he's stepping up to heavyweight, but I think I stand a very good chance against him. Bruno showed a new side to his game in his next fight. A brutal left hook to the body. Underneath with a tremendous left, and he's over and out. Oh, that's amazing. Larry Frazier counted out. Absolutely had all the breath knocked out of him by that tremendous left underneath from Frank Bruno. Only the second time the man's ever been stopped in his career. And this man, Bruno, has done it again. He does hurt people, and the man is still prostrate. I really like how Bruno doubled up the punch. Has been absolutely done with a left hand underneath. That went into the body and it scythed him in two and it left him on the floor for something like two minutes. Here we are again. This is the power of Bruno. He has demonstrated how he can hit tonight. He's dug it up underneath twice with the left. Now that Bruno had some confidence, he was stepped up in class to fight former world champion Jerry Kutzer. 
This was the supreme test then for Frank Bruno, one fight away from a world title challenge. Three months intense preparation, he was in ideal condition, but would he have the character and the craft to land his own big punches while avoiding the bombs that were sure to come from Kutsia? Jerry was a very experienced and solid world-level fighter, and this was considered a big test for Bruno. To face this giant South African, Jerry Kutsia, the former heavyweight champion of the world. One man looking for the comeback road, the other man looking for the glory that comes with going for the big one. Bruno, one fight, perhaps only one punch away from a crack. And the world title, the right's got him. Inside a minute, he's got him. One right hand from the blue. 10,000 were in attendance, and Bruno opened up with a fierce right hand to get the crowd off their feet. Kutsia's only been stopped twice. He's got him again, he won't get up from that. He's stretched out over the photographers. He'll never make it. He's out, 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 and Bruno is on his way to a crack. Notice Bruno extends his combination and catches Jerry with the final punch. has got to be the hardest hitting heavyweight in the world today. Here's the first knockdown. The fight wasn't a minute old when it happened. Look at that pile driving. Right hand that went right through from the shoulder. And believe me, Kutsia did well to get up from that. Here it comes again from overhead. And when he got up, he had a cut. Jerry was a good counterpuncher, but this wasn't the time to exchange with Bruno. The left got him on the right to the temple, actually. And he went out backwards. Here we go again, the left, the left and the right stretched him out. The official time is the winner. The official time, one minute and 50 seconds. And the South African still doesn't know where he is or what's hit him. All the people he's met, Greg Page and Witherspoon and Weaver and Thomas, nobody's ever hit him like that. 40,000 people packed into Wembley Stadium to watch Bruno challenge Tim Witherspoon for the WBA heavyweight title. Bruno is the harder puncher, but Witherspoon is a very clever boxer as he moves in, and he's never been knocked down. The fight was competitive for most of the way through. He had so much power, so much physical strength. crowd rising to that different angles but we have not had the red carpet rolled out to it us seemed here. like excuse me it seemed like Wilson was hurt for a second a left hook he does seem to be a little bit on wobbly legs here he wobbled for a second there Tim was, and he's still not too solid but Bruno is not wasting any, any any energy any punches Witherspoon's left eye was swollen from Bruno's repeated jabbing It's not cut, but he's got a mouse under it, hand, and it has not been very impressive tonight. There was a good right hand by Witherspoon. And again. And there's a left hand by Witherspoon. And another right, and Bruno backs up, and for the first time, appears to have been hurt. Another good right hand. Tim Witherspoon. That was a solid right hand by Witherspoon. And Bruno's still standing. And a left hand behind it, and that backs up Frank Bruno. Now Bruno turns Witherspoon around. Gets Both guys had their moments in the fight, and it was a close fight going into the 10th round. Respected boxing scorer Harold Lederman had Witherspoon one round in front. I thought Frank was doing his best when he was staying in the middle of the ring and using that crisp left jab. I agreed with Larry Merchant, who had Bruno one round in front. So I have it five to four for Bruno.
In the 11th round, Bruno got caught with a right hand in an exchange, and he was badly hurt. As we said before, Bruno has virtually no survival skills. Notice he gets hit with every right hand. Notice both guys land clean right hands simultaneously. The lamb and put uh, Bruno in a lot of trouble. At this point now, Bruno does not have the stand power nor the experience to deal with uh, Tim Wood's point. And at that point, he was all but out. Time was ticking down at the end of the round, but here you can see he's out on his feet. Took quite a lot of punishment there. And here we have another shot. Overhand right. Bruno came back with the shot, but uh, by then, he was already hurt. Those right hands came did the behind job. a strong right hand by Frank Bruno. There is Frank's mother, and she is right now as, as confused as anyone else. Witherspoon would go on to be knocked out in one round by Bone Crusher in his next fight. Witherspoon still in trouble. Down he goes again, and now it's the over. Fight. Rivera stops the fight. The fight is over. I'm speechless now. I, uh, World Boxing Association heavyweight champion, James Bone Crusher Smith. Mike Tyson would beat Bone Crusher and become the undisputed heavyweight king. At this point, Bruno changed trainer. A very, very gentle giant outside the ring, but what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make him a little bit more uh, vicious, if you want to call it that word, uh, in the ring, and uh, do a better job. But outside the ring, he's a pussycat, he's a lovely guy. His comeback fight was against Quick Tillis, who had gone the distance with a prime Mike Tyson just 10 months previous. The undisputed heavyweight king himself was in the UK to watch the fight at ringside. Close. Yeah. How are you enjoying London, Tyson? Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> hey, you see, I'm the only one that got the better of him. <laughs> Tillis had become the first man to take Tyson the distance the previous year. After eight months out of the ring, Frank Bruno returns, and you can hear for yourself the sort of reception he's getting from this big. Wembley crowd. I'm delighted to say he's sitting right beside me and he's going to help me with the commentary tonight. Mike Tyson, welcome to Wembley, Mike. Thank you very much, Harry. It's just give us, uh, sorry, just give us your opinion on how you think this might go. Well, this is going to be an interesting fight because Frank Bruno's coming off a layoff and being knocked out by the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, because I'm sure Bruno knows he has to put up a good show and if he wants to shot at the title. And we should be in for a very dandy fight. Tillis had some success. Notice this sharp counter right hand. Hand over the top, and he finds Bruno very easy to catch with. Well, this is only the first round, but from my experience, I box Tillis. He's an experienced fighter, and he'll do everything impossible to make you lose your concentration, make you look bad. And he's a very awkward fighter, and he's capable of doing that. But Bruno was winning the rounds. Even Tillis smiled about that one. He's not smiling about those. That's the best combination Bruno's put together yet. Mike, what did, what did you think of this little combination here from Frank? It's the best he's done yet, isn't it? I would say so, Harry. Oh, my God, this is <laughs> tremendous. Um, I'm impressed with Bruno's hand speed. That's good left downstairs from Bruno. And he lets the punches go. He puts them together like that. He looks very dangerous. Good uppercut from Bruno. And he's hurt till this... Till in the fifth round, Bruno exploded into action and went after Tillis, and his right hand was on point. Bleeding badly, and he's hurt in the fifth, and he might be going. Bruno can't get a clean shot at him. Tillis is badly hurt, and he doesn't want to fight on, and the referee stopped it anyway. Bruno just did what the heavyweight champion couldn't do and made Tillis quit. Mike was very impressed with Frank's performance. Oh, Harry, this is a tremendous, a tremendous performance on Bruno. This hand right here, I think, broke the nose of Tillis uh -huh. because it's so accurately straight and right on the precise, right on the target, right between the gloves, like a master archer. 
congratulations. You made a good comeback there. Thank you very much, Harry. I was a bit rusty and hesitating a little bit because I knew I had to pace myself against him. There's nothing rusty about that right hand. I think you busted his nose, haven't you? I think so, something like that, Harry. Very nervous and rusty, Harry, you know? I was very nervous tonight, to be quite honest, very, very honest, but I just thank God I got this one out of the way, if you know what I mean, Harry. I thought he did a tremendous performance, Frank. I commend you, and I know how it is fighting a fighter like Frank Brown, I mean, excuse me, James Tillis on an eight-month layoff. It's a spoiler. You came out very well. Your punches, I thought, at, at a boxer point of view, knowing your layoff, it was tremendous, That's accurate, kind of and you. I'm very impressed. Very kind and I look forward right. to meeting you in the future. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you as well. Thank you very nice much. One. I think Cheers. you're a great man. Thank you. Same to you, Mike. Bruno fought American Chuck Gardner next, and it was a devastating performance. Bruno was hunting Gardner down from the start. He really does look ancient. Even what hair there is is grey. And a lot of that 17 stone 4, you can see for yourself, is flab. And there's the first punch from Bruno. Not a heavy one, but Gardner felt it. Gardner only arrived two days before the fight and didn't look in good shape. 2,400 people, and it's very close to capacity. That's a good punch, and that looks to me as though we may not see any more of Chuck Gardner of Minneapolis tonight. One punch, that's all it took, and he's out, and good enough. The man took 30 hours to get here. He arrived exhausted on Thursday night, had a nightmare journey. He clearly is underfit, and it only took one not terribly lethal-looking punch from Bruno to put him away, and he's still stricken. Bruno fainted the jab and landed a left hook, which sent everyone home early. Suggestions that this was not a good match, I'm afraid, have been proved right. The man had no chance. He shouldn't have been in the ring. But you don't want fights like that. It's done Bruno no good, and it's certainly done Chuck Gardner no good, and it's a relief to see that he's regained consciousness. You're going to be all right, pal. Even though he's still down. Well, I'm just saying you're going to be all right, pal, but uh, I don't know whether he'd agree with that. Okay, let's get him up. Get this ball. Well, it's a pathetic sight in this festival hall in Cannes. The big man who came all this way to be put on his face. It's refreshing to hear the honesty of the commentator. You don't hear this kind of honesty in today's boxing commentary. In fact, it was a left hook, just hooked, and it was all he needed to pitch full on his face and out to the world. And we have to hope that uh, the opposition will be rather more resilient than that. Bruno did a job on the American Reggie Cross next. There's nowhere else he can get him except the top of his head. Well, this would certainly have been stopped in Britain by now. No question of that. The man's offering almost no resistance except the occasional swing as he comes out of these close quarter exchanges. Grows hands down, standing there just waiting. And it's become a part. Bruno's power and volume was just too much and broke Cross down for a referee stoppage. And that, I think, is that. I didn't hear the bell. So I assume that the referee has at long last... Bruno fought Joe Bugner next in what was the richest sports event ever to happen in Britain at that point. The build-up to the fight was explosive. Bruno, in the recent week, is that we had a uh, story coming over to Australia where he actually accused me of being a chicken for not facing him. Well, I just want to tell Frank that this chicken has come to roost. Uh, you know, in this country, if you happen to be a winner, they don't like you. They like, they like to have good losers in this country. In all the run-up to this fight, you've been, uh, you've been opening your mouth, if you like, and being very vocal in press conferences. Not vocal. I've been positive. What, what they don't seem to like in this country is that when you say what you think, and, that, and it's a damn shame. I mean, if, if there were more people like Maggie Thatcher out there, I think this country would be on its feet far greater than it is at the moment. Unfortunately, one lady runs this country. And as soon as you open your mouth, they, they tr everybody tries to put their foot into your mouth. And uh, I've, had this, I've had this problem for 20 years. I mean, a lot of what Bugner's actually been saying has been centred around sort of vitriolic hatred that he's actually had of you personally. Yeah, I hate him as well, you know. Why? 
Um, I just don't like him, the things what he's been saying and things like that. I just don't like him at all. Both guys wanted to fight out of the blue corners, and it was settled by a coin toss at the stadium where the fight was going to be held. Bruno won the toss. Notice the whole football ground cheering for Bruno. The fight was a huge event in the UK. As I promised Joe, you know, I wouldn't go down amongst the, the you know, the people down there. So no, another worry off his mind, you know, if he knows that I'm up here. Who's going to win? I've, I've been supporting Bruno from the off, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Bruno will win, I think, yeah. <laughs> Definitely win. Everyone's rooting for Bruno here. Of course they are. He's a Londoner and I'm a Londoner, so he's got him. Do you know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> I must say, the, the crowd is, is coming. The night out with the lads, and I always love a good fight. I don't know whether it'll be that, but you can hope. The fight itself was a disappointment. 16 million people had tuned in to watch the fight live. Turn that punch right above the commentary position there. Bruno was in control and scored with his combinations. The difference was Reg, those were fighters slightly over the hill, but Bruno is enough, still considering himself a nothing coming fighter. Oh, that's a good swipe there by Bruno. In the eighth round, Bruno followed up his double jab with a good right hand, and Bugner was hurt. Do it. Yep. And he's down. He clubbed him with a right hand, and he's, he won't go down, Bugner. At that point, he didn't even put the knees on the canvas. He tried to absorb the punches, and that was a pretty brave effort of his, perhaps foolish. And he's getting seven, eight, nine, and he's going to let him box on, and he's pinned in Bruno's corner, and it won't go surely now. The towel has come in from the Australian's corner, and Bugner doesn't know why. Bruno followed up, and Bugner's corner threw in the towel. I think Bugner was just too old. He was past his best. It was a part of my life, and I couldn't have walked the streets tonight if Joe would have beat me. He's a very good, experienced guy. A lot of people knew he was experienced. They knew it was a good fight. A lot of people thought he was going to beat me tonight. All of England was on, on my back, and I had to knock him out, and I did knock him out. And this is all um, for people, a Christmas present for everybody. I love it. I feel beautiful on top of the world, you know, on top of the world. I'm glad it's over, because now... No, no, it didn't have anything no, to do I with know, but me. Do you regret it happening? No, no, because now he will retire satisfied. Bruno was now an even bigger name than before. At this point, Bruno was gunning for a title shot against the heavyweight king, Mike Tyson. But a lot yeah. of people are saying, well, we all love Frank Bruno, but right. should he be in the same ring with Tyson? Should well, anybody be in with I'm, Tyson? I'm the number one contender for that title. You really fighting. fancy the fight? Yeah, I do fancy the fight. You may think I'm crazy or I've been drinking wine or something like that, but I do fancy the fight. Okay, and obviously the Witherspoon thing will be out of the way, out of your mind. Yeah, my mind. It's like being married, you know. It's like getting divorced and some you don't your wife's run away with it, run away with the milkman or something like that. It'll always be in my heart, but it's out of there at the moment. I'll tell you what, this late hour we won't see any milkman around, but we have no, seen you tonight. Right. Thank you very see some much. Or something <laughs> yeah, like we that. might do that. Cheers. Thanks ever so much, Frank. Thank you very much for having me on here. Cheers. Thank you. Frank Bruno, lovely fella, isn't he? Bruno was so loved in Britain that people didn't want to see him going in with Tyson because people didn't want to see him getting destroyed. But when the fight was announced, everyone got behind him. Bruno tried to intimidate Mike at the weigh-in, but that was never going to work. ...of weigh-in as competitive psychodrama. He stepped up to Mike Tyson and tried to engage him in a staring match, and Tyson, showing that he could bottom anything Bruno wanted to try, engaged in a little bit of street machismo, pulling down his knickers slightly to try to over-intimidate Bruno. ...destruction of Michael Spinks, and Tyson dispenses with the towel with the hole in the middle of... Okay, listen. I gave both fighters their instructions in the dress room. I'm cautioning again. Obey my commands at all times. Is there any questions? Shake hands. Good luck. Tyson clobbered Bruno with an overhand right inside in the first 10 seconds of the fight. Bruno down after a right hand. It is scored as a knockdown. Go, go. What a monster this man Tyson is. But Bruno's fast hands and big power hurt Tyson later in the round. But fighting back and he's hurt Tyson. He's hurt Tyson. And Tyson knows it and he's going for him. What a
Harry Carpenter, the British commentator who covered Frank's career, got carried away and started cheering on Bruno. Get in there, Frank! And Tyson is most certainly looking disturbed. Tyson had just fired his longtime trainer, Kevin Rooney, and this certainly wasn't his best performance. Bruno suddenly is right back in it. Hardly believable. Well, he's got the big punch, Frank, and he landed it. There's the bell, and he's come through the first round, and the pair of them eye each other with some respect. That was the first bit. All sorts of trouble for Bruno as he tumbled in the opening seconds. That was a good right and a following left, and that was the really good left. Look at his legs. He almost went. Notice Tyson using his jab to land a great right hand here. By Bruno, he is astonishingly effective with it. Right hand by Tyson landed flush on the jaw. Bruno in trouble again. Bruno tried to get his jab going, but Tyson was just too dynamic. With the strongest man in Great Britain for this exact kind of fight, now I think it paid off because it gave him a sense of knowing how to tie his man up. It's very unorthodox, but it's good. I think the speed of Tyson's right hand was something Frank just couldn't adjust to. Notice Tyson coming in with a great left hook here. Solid left hook inside. And an uppercut with the right. And Bruno has wobbled again. The problem for Frank is he just can't see the punches coming. Tyson at this point was just an absolutely phenomenal fighter. Notice Tyson closing the show with his trademark bolo uppercut. Oh, he's it's just a matter of this time is here. Vicious punishment. That's that shot. That's that, 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 that bolo shot. And Beautiful Richard shot. Steele. I think every heavyweight around at this time was just very unlucky to be active at a time when Mike Tyson was at his peak. But you did hit him with an awfully good punch in the first round, a yeah, left hook. Did right. you feel him crumble a little? Yeah, I felt him crumble very well. But was he too clever to be able to get more punches in at? He's a very good fighter. As I said, you could take nothing away from Mike Tyson. And I thought I had the power to beat him tonight, but unfortunately I didn't win. Were you hurt when he knocked you down in the first round? Um, I should have, um, not hurt, shocked more than hurt. Shocked. So that it was a sort of a warning of this is how he punches? Yeah, you could say so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frank, Thank for you. a game fight. Bruno's losing effort against Tyson only further endeared him to the British fans and they were all behind him when he made his comeback once again. I thought Bruno was a bit fortunate not to get disqualified in his comeback fight against Emin. Then Emin will be flat on his back. Well, he's on one knee. A cuffing right hand put Emin down early, but the referee didn't call it a knockdown. Right hand. Everything will now depend how well Emin can take a punch, and Frank has hit him when he's down. Now that is not right, and Frank a little bit too eager there, and Mr. Van the referee is trying to get the Dutchman to his feet. Frank landed a clearly illegal punch while Emin was down. The left leg seems to be giving him trouble, and I do hope we're not going to have all this end in a farcical situation. And I've seen fighters like Roy Jones get disqualified for this. And I've got a horrible feeling I don't think it was intentional or anything, but that doesn't matter. It was illegal. And uh, Mickey Van is now giving him perhaps the strongest lecture he's ever had in the ring. Emin decided to continue and was starched by the first punch Bruno threw. A beautiful lead left hook there from Frank. Then he went down and then Frank threw the left hook. That was uh, over enthusiasm, over exuberance, not thinking, but still inexcusable. Jose Ribalta had gone 10 rounds with prime Mike Tyson and was making fun of Bruno's eye surgery, which really annoyed Frank. And Bruno's threatening to do it. Bruno timed a perfect overhand right, and Ribalta was brutally knocked out. Bruno certainly doesn't at the moment anyway. He looks like a 30-year-old who's coming towards the end of a career. And he's looking quite young and sprightly. That's a good right hand, and the man's right above me, and he's almost coming out on top of me. And down goes Rivalta, and what, what are people going to say about that? Was that a bum opponent? Everybody said he was a good one. He's knocked out. Round two, Bruno's won again.
Now what are they going to say? The big punch of Bruno has absolutely rendered him unconscious. And I hope he's all right. One thing about Bruno, his knockout percentage was 95%. It was different. What a thundering right hand that was. If he landed cleanly on opponents, he usually knocked them out. From this moment, he threatened to come toppling over the top rope, right above me. And I expected six and a half feet of Cuban to land on me, but he landed inside the ropes. He had mega power. In the second round, to a few big punches from the big man Bruno, who's done it again. Over what he said about your eye? Yeah, I know people can do, go in the ring and do whatever they want to do, but when they start bringing the game into disrepute, Oh, you say it, Harry. It's a bit sad, but I'm glad it's all over. Well, when you came into the ring, you looked a bit serious and yeah. a bit sombre, and I thought you didn't like what he said and you were going to have your own back on him, and Harry, you did, didn't you? Harry, it's a very serious game, boxing, mate. It's not like commentating. You don't have right. to tell you, me, old son. I know. <laughs> but I'm maturing, Harry, getting a bit of more of a man. I'm 30 now. I'm not no grey hairs yet, but I'm maturing. Got another 10 years in you yet? I don't think so, Harry. I might have, I might have, a, I might have a 10 years to use me Black and Decker, but that's about what I think. <laughs> Frank, well, well done tonight. Thank you very much, and all you listeners. Thank like you, and viewers. Yes. <laughs> Bruno faced off against tough Pierre Kotzer next. Kotzer was coming off a loss to Riddick Bowe in a fight that was a very entertaining slugfest. He had acquitted himself well in that fight. Safety first fight. This is the most I've seen. Good straight right hand. We've got a first round brawl, and Pierre Kutzer is getting hit too much. The next fight for Bolt would be his championship win over Hollyfield. Mike Tyson was in prison at this time. And the power I feel in my body is unbelievable. But power is not everything. You've got to have the brains as well to use the power. Yeah. I see myself winning, most definitely winning. But how? I'm not, I'm not too sure. Either with this hand or that one. Kotzer was game as usual and was more than willing to mix it up with Bruno early. Uh, Kotzer throwing plenty of punches in these little flurries. And certainly Frank doesn't want to take any chances. Notice the success Kotzer is having with the left hook. And again, the left hook from Kotzer is, I think that's hurt Bruno. Big attack by Kutzer. And Bruno doesn't want to stand around in the corner and get caught with those. But Bruno's power started to take over the fight and wear coats are down. That's one of the best right hands that Bruno's put across so far. And again, the elbow and the shoulder going in from Bruno. Tries the big slashing right hand. And that only stirs Kutzer into action. In the eighth round, Bruno did a really nice move to take a step outside to create an angle for the crushing right hand. That's a better punch. That hurt him at last. Bruno got to a punch that hurt him. He's come out almost on top of me. He was only saved because two or three people around me helped push him back. It took him eight rounds to really get through. And the towel has come in from the South African corner. It's all over. They pulled Putsia out of the fight. That's a pretty humane gesture because he was going to take more punishment and Bruno lifts his arms a lot. He's come through a very, very severe test indeed. I was impressed with how Frank paced himself in this fight. I also thought he was defensively better. Started it all off. A huge right hand to the top of the head, took him to the ropes, and then I think the punch had still left him dazed and he came out on top of one of my monitors here. Stunning punch, and he hadn't really recovered when Bruno came for him again, and he couldn't support himself sufficiently to stop himself tumbling through the ropes. That little step to the outside is just nice to watch. So, a typical Bruno attack at the finish. When he has them going, he knows how to finish them. And the official decision, not a retirement. The towel is not actually accepted by the referee that he's been through a fight. It took a long time before he finally managed to crack 
this man's resistance. That's the sort of work I need, Harry. One or two left hooks seem to me to hurt you quite badly, is that right? Um, I don't think they hurt me badly, Harry. I've got to learn how to pace myself because I can't knock everybody over, if you know what I mean, Harry. I've got to pace myself sometimes. <laughs> now, tell me about the eighth round, because when you caught him up the top of the head with yeah. that right hand, that's right. what set everything going. Yeah, he looked like he turned he turned away a little bit, yep. and I tried to follow it up, and, and Roy Francis saved him because he could have got serious damage. Well, he very so, nearly came out of the ring on top of me. Yeah, it's not on that suit, Harry, the <laughs> birthday suit. I'd like to wish you a happy birthday today to your birthday, mate. <laughs> Bruno looked good in his next fight against Williams. Bernard's trunks. And it's an amazing fact about Bruno's career that only one fight of his has ever gone the full distance. And that was back in November 1984. A 10-rounder against a man called Phil Brown, and he's got him! Just as I'm talking about a fight going the distance, he pulls the big punch out for the first time. He puts the man on the floor, and Dave Paris has seen enough. He was patient and landed a nice right hand to get the job done. A cardinal rule in boxing is to never back up in a straight line like Williams does here. Bruno knew where his head was going to be and stiffened him up with that right hand. Holding an axe of the American's jawline, he beat the count. I didn't think at one point he was going to beat it. But now it's all over and Bruno is the winner and his wife Laura is coming into the ring and she'll be the most relieved person here. Let's look at that again. Extraordinary, uh, caught him up above the ear. Now, isn't that interesting? High up on the head and Frank poses with Laura and she'll be the most relieved person here. She will not have enjoyed any of that. And I don't blame her. That was one tough fight. And the whole of Britain will be relieved that their man Bruno has come through it safely. Uh, this is my full fight now after three years out of the ring and my first fight was a one round two round the second round was a, two, um, a three or two rounds and this, the next one was an eight rounds and this one was a ten round so i couldn't answer no more than that harry yes i got cut a little bit but i can fight to live another day harry and it i can look forward to lennox lewis beating um Tony Tucker Tucker. and look for a what's a roadblock fight in september hopefully <laughs> The fight between Bruno and Lennox Lewis was a huge affair in Britain and the world. You can run around and shout off how much he wants in the ring, but when I catch up with him, all he's got to do is blink once and his lights are out, mate. It's history in the making. 70, it's decades over decades over decades over decades. So it's history in the making, Charlie. I think Mike Tyson had more ability than him. Tim Witherspoon had more ability than him. Um, Bonecrusher Smith had much more ability than him as regards as punching power and staying power and taking the punch and heart and determination. Lewis and Riddick Bo couldn't agree terms for a fight. So Bo, who held all the belts and was the heavyweight king, threw the WBC belt in the trash. Lewis had picked up that belt and the fight with Bruno was now huge. Bruno's plan was to face off against Lewis first and win that WBC belt. He then planned on taking on Bo for the undisputed crown. Mm -hmm. Give it to Lennox Lewis and he defends it against me and then me and Bo get it on sometime in the summer. That's right, the title will be mine again. No, no, I don't think so, but so, I'm not going to get involved in no slagging match because I respect him as a champion. I respect you too, Bruno. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. You all right? <laughs> But, we all respect each other, but, um, um, but that sounds like a pretty busy year for you, Frank. First you beat Lennox uh, yeah. over there, and then you beat Riddick. Most definitely, that's my plans for 93. There's nothing wrong with wishful thinking. Huh? That's my plan. There's nothing wrong with wishful thinking. Okay. He can probably beat Lennox, but no. not me. I respect um, Lennox Lewis there, and I respect Riddick both, but that's my plans for 93, you know what I mean? Beat, take the WBC championship off first. Um, Lennox Lewis here first, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? Get the titles together with Riddick Bow. Well, you know, I've been known to spoil a couple of plans of my time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and as I understand it, you could remind us of, of Ali just a little bit, couldn't you? One of the greatest fighters of all time. <laughs> Who knows? He keeps talking, I'm going to jump on you. <laughs> You can't jump on me because I'm not that way inclined, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes the formal proceeding. God save the Queen! The British public were truly behind Bruno in the fight. Bruno was the most loved sportsman in Britain's history. This is the scene in the dressing room area at the Carter Farms Park. The arrival of Frank Bruno, the challenger. 
He's going into this ritual, preparing for a world title for the third time. As you can see who the fans are going for tonight, and I'm very chilled, very relaxed. Last I'm, message for Lennox. I'm going to knock him out so hard he's got to pay to get back in. And now with me is one of uh, Wales' favourite daughters, Catherine Zeta-Jones, well-known actress. What are you doing here, Catherine? You into boxing? I'm not. No, it's the first time I've ever been to a boxing match, professional or amateur. That's my dad who's dragged me along. He's an avid fan, so uh, we're going to have a nice evening. Yeah. Who's it going to be then, Bruno or Lewis? I don't know. I think I think public opinion is Lewis, and I'm going with that. But I'd love to see Frankie do it, you know. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just here for the good time and, I, and the party and the, the the camaraderie, and I want to sing the Welsh national anthem and things like that, you know. So proud. <laughs> okay, terrific, Catherine. I know you're extremely busy yourself with doing Catherine Cooks and dramas and all that sort of thing. So thanks for sparing the time to come and talk to us here. I will look forward to the game later on. <laughs> we were out for dinner last night. <laughs> the former undefeated European heavyweight champion, Frank Bruno. Lewis was a big favorite though and was expected to demolish Frank. The fight occurred in a stadium in Wales and there was an agreement that the referee could stop the fight any time after the third round if it started raining heavily. In that case, the fight would go to the scorecards. Lewis was considered to be the better boxer with the better jab, but it was immediately apparent that it was actually Frank who had the better jab. Bruno lands a jab right here like a baseball pitcher. And so far, the boxing gods are blessing us with dry skies. There is no rain, and we haven't been able to say that unequivocally in Wales for about a week. I thought Frank won the first round off his jabbing. Bruno pumping the jab early and going to the body in round number two. Lewis still looking tentative. The second round was more of the same. Bruno appears the more self-assured fighter early on, George. Bruno became more aggressive with his jab. I think he now realized he had the best jab in the fight. To the body. Good left hook by Bruno. The best punch of the bout, that left hook by Bruno, and it backs Lewis up. Bruno was now on the front foot, and he had taken control of the fight. Good. They traded punches. Lewis landed the right, but Bruno keeps going at it. Bruno also started roughing him up with some illegal rabbit punching. I thought Lewis did the right thing by fouling back. And here's the challenge for 140-pound Mickey Van to pull these two large, strong heavyweights apart. Now Van is going to give a lecture. You can't let someone intentionally foul you in the ring and get away with it, in my opinion. Worst mistake that could have been made by Lewis was to get into this kind of fight. In the third round, Bruno started bullying Lewis around the ring and hurt him badly. Appeared against Williams. Good right here by Bruno. Right hand. Bruno has Lewis in serious trouble. Let's see if Lennox knows how to hold on. And Bruno leaped in at him the way he didn't leap at Mike Tyson after he hit him. In trouble. Bruno pounding away to the body. That right hand is one of the biggest punches Lennox Lewis has ever taken in his career. This is the time for Bruno to get close and stay close. Notice Bruno mixes in nice body shots. Not going to be able to land a good straight right hand. Bruno trying to finish. Remember, he had Tyson in trouble in round one. Couldn't get him out of there. Hands down. People have been telling Lewis, comparing him with Muhammad Ali, the worst mistake in the world. It was a real shock to see Bruno winning the fight so easily. Hands high to take away that right hand, and he lands his own right hand. Bruno is asking questions of the champion he has never been asked before. How will he respond to a real war? He's any advantage he might have had. Lewis was a big favorite, but Bruno was just doing whatever he wanted and completely in control of the action. He's eating Bruno's jam. He went right hand crazy against Tucker on those occasions when he had him in trouble. And stiff jabs by Bruno. Lewis can never get to grips with Bruno's jab, and that says a lot about Bruno's jab, because Lewis had a pretty good jab. At this point, I had Bruno comfortably winning every round and cruising towards an easy win. The commentators agreed. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? Jim. 
Four rounds to nothing, 40 to 36, Frank Bruno. I tell you, Jim, I can't believe this. The heavyweight champion in the world, in my eyes, is running away. Frank Bruno is taking it to him. Lennox Lewis is doing nothing more than pouring with the left hand. He pours it out. He misses the right hand constantly. He throws his right hand like a girl. It's all Frank Bruno. I thought Lewis showed a pretty good chin in this fight. Bruno, as we know, is a big puncher. On the canvas in the first round. Right hand lands over the top for Bruno. Lewis backs up into the ropes again. He can't take too many more of those right hands, though. Lewis still tentative, seemingly wary of Bruno's power. Bruno remembering to go to the body there. Bruno's jab was just totally on point in this fight. I'm doing much of anything right now, George. But... Every time Lewis tried to get his jab going, Bruno just out jabbed him. Just as Bruno's is. The fighters have the benefit of the ring lights, which warms it up by about 10 degrees. Crowd chanting, Bruno, Bruno. <laughs> Lewis missing wildly and holding on. Bruno pumping him inside with short right hand. Set in the offing here in Carter. Bruno is starting to drop his left hand a little too much, though. Lewis started to do a bit better in the sixth round. Okay. And it was a good one, which backed Bruno up, and it was thrown on the break. Remember that Bruno led on the scorecards late against Bonecrusher Smith was TKO'd in the 10th. Led on the scorecards late against Tim Witherspoon was TKO'd in the 11th. Bruno came out in the seventh round and took control again. I thought Bruno was now at the point in his career where he could keep himself safe and pace himself to a victory. Left hand and a right over the top by Bruno, who takes command again as this round... But out of nowhere, Lewis landed a huge counter left hook. Have a different fight. Just doesn't have any respect. Lewis in trouble in the corner. And lands a sensational left hook. What a comeback by Lewis. Now let's see if he can finish. He's Bruno in serious trouble. He's got him now if he can finish. Right hand top. Bruno just had no ability to survive while hurt badly once again and was a sitting duck for every punch. And Mickey Van is going to stop it. No, he's not going to stop it. He is lecturing Lewis, and hit, Mickey, holding and hitting. Mickey Van has given Bruno a chance to recover. Can Bruno recover? He's going down. It's amazing that Bruno stands up and now Mickey Van it would have been wise to take a knee and try to regroup. Lennox Lewis, desperately behind on the scorecards, produced a sensational left hook. I also think this was just a lapse in concentration from Bruno. He was comfortably winning the fight at range. There was just no need to follow Lewis into that corner like that. The question would be, could Lennox Lewis survive the round? And there's the punch. George, they always say a fighter is never more dangerous than That's when he's, when he's in hurt. trouble. That's right. Him for so many years can surely be proud. He showed muscle and stomach and heart until he ran into that one unforgettable left hook. He's, he's translated the role of plucky loser into millions of dollars. And this won't hurt him either. I'm okay, I'm so I'm fine, so thank you very much for watching and supporting me. Thank you. I'm fine, Nick Luck and Rach. All the bad work is done now, all the bad words are finished with. Yeah. What you must have respect for Lennox. I've got respect for him, but I'm still gonna sue him for calling me Uncle Tom, you know. I have got the greatest amount of respect for any boxer. After if I got beaten, if I won, I've got the greatest amount of respect, but I haven't got no respect for no one calling me Uncle Tom. But that is a separate item. He beat me fair and square and good luck to him. Bruno had made a lot of money by this point, but he still hadn't won a world title. He decided to give it one more try. His comeback fight was against Jesse Ferguson. Ferguson had been knocked out in the second round against Riddick Bowe. That sharp left hook. Bruno went one better. And all the scoring punches in these opening couple of minutes coming from Bruno. And Big Jesse is looking a little unsteady on his pins. Oh my word, he's not going to go over in one, is he? Bruno just kept the pressure on and clobbered Ferguson to the canvas. Bruno hitting him down on the back of the neck. You get told about that. The rabbit punch. That is illegal. Frank's going for the big win here. He wants to beat Riddick Bow. And Ferguson is offering nothing in resistance. 
He's got a, a lump coming up at the side of his left eye. Bergeron has gone down for the second time. Well, all you can say is that Bruno's going in doing his stuff. Austin Lennox Lewis, there she is. I thought it was a decent win for Bruno, but Harry Carpenter wasn't happy with Ferguson's performance. We have yet another Frank Bruno first round win. That when you get beaten, you take real punches and you take them well, but yeah. you take good punches. Now right. those sort of punches on the top of the head to me are not good punches. I'm not saying I'm not saying you haven't done your job. Yeah. You've done your job. What Harry I'm saying is he wasn't a good opponent for you. He was a good opponent. You think so? You, you say he wasn't. A he good didn't look like a good opponent tonight. Yeah, but Harry, on paper, yeah, he was a durable sort of guy. A lot of people said that he would have taken me eight rounds or six rounds. He was durable. You know what I mean? People were thinking that he was going to beat me tonight. You know what I mean? And I beat him in one round. What more well, can can't I, argue I, about, I can't argue Mr. about that. Harry Carpenter. I know your wife's here. You know what I mean? Everybody's here, but you're trying to. I I'm, beat him in one round. If I would have went I'm eight rounds, get the fuel. Listen, sort of I'm like trying to get the thing in perspective. That's yeah, I'm trying, trying to put it in perspective as well, Harry. You know what I mean? If I, I beat him in one round, if I had to him eight rounds, you just said, Frank, I think it's about time for you to call it a day. I beat him in one round. What more do I need to do, Harry? Okay. Now, from your point of view, it's a great win. I, I accept that totally. Thank you very much, Harry. What did Laura say to you when she got up? Um, Laura didn't get up there today, you know, I was looking yes, she for she did. She was in there. there. She went up there. Did she? Yeah, I didn't see her, Harry. <laughs> you She's her. here. She's here, but I, I didn't see her, you know? In Bruno's next fight back, he only needed 65 seconds to stop the outmatched Marin. You know, we see a right hand that's really kind of glancing, not a big shot. Marin, again, questionable that he should even be in with the caliber of a Frank Bruno. Marin got up at the count of five, but then Bruno continued his attack. You'll see a big right hand there he just missed. Some bad intentions on that one, although it didn't land. Again, not too much offense offered by Marin, questionable opponent. There it is, Bruno knocking down Marin for the second time. Marin counted out by referee John Coyle. Bruno, who lost to Lennox Lewis in October of 1993, came back in March of 94 to KO Jesse Ferguson in the first round. This is his first fight in 1995. I think this was just a confidence-building fight for Frank. At this point, Lennox Lewis had been knocked out by Oliver McCall and lost his world title. My fight's always got him. Oh, Lewis walked into a right hand, and that was the sucker punch that they worried about. And Lewis staggers, and the referee has uh, decided it's all over. My goodness, what an upset, and Lennox Lewis's career must now be in tatters. Bruno set his sights on McCall, and terms were agreed to have the fight in the UK. But he would have one more warm-up fight first. Britain's very own. First professional fight in Scotland, Frank Bruno, after all this time. Evans didn't put up much of a fight. Bruno took the front foot and chopped him down with the right hand pretty quickly. He'll be monitoring the level of his performance, coming in as a pretty late substitute for Ray Annis. Good right to the body, and he tumbles down, Evans. The best means of defense is attacking. Nobody ever told him that. He's got to keep this guy off of him. Try and throw a few more punches back. And for Bruno, it'll be good if he can go three, four, five rounds, maybe. But I don't think this guy is going to be able to last that long. Very one-sided. Second round, Bruno with a clubbing right hand. Down goes Evans again. Shakes his head. The count's at five, six. He's up at six. I thought Evans showed some heart to get up from that clean right hand, at least. The final left hook from Bruno was a sweet shot. Well, Evans is still there, somehow. Oh, oh, left hook. hook, left hook. That's the third knockdown. Will it be the last? He's wincing, Evans, shaking his head. I don't know if he's going to get up this time. It's over. It's all over in the second round. Well, that's the difference, and here we see the end of it again. It, it didn't look a particularly devastating punch. He came around the side, he walked to his right, and then to a left, little left hook, hit him on the square on the chin, so that was good enough. And the guy, we see it from a different angle here, he walks to the side, and it's him, so it's a pretty solid punch all the same. Just talk us through it. I was trying to catch him with cleanies, hit, 
get him down, but, you know, he was very tricky and slippery, and I had to get him behind these gloves, show him the jab a little bit, and then catch him. That's nice. And that weren't no messing around, you know? Long distance sort of jab. But you had to watch him, you know? He's a tricky sort of guy. When you hit him, he came back at you. You know, he didn't come here to fall down, and he got hit with a proper shot. He weren't you no know, gesturing. And despite what people say, the guy Lennox Lewis is fighting, he's, he's on paper, he looks like a better record than what he had Evans. Yeah, I understand right? that, Not too yeah. many people have done that to him. Message for McCall? Uh, McCall, you know, I can't wait for it to happen. I know he hasn't got no respect for me. As outside the ring, he's got um, respect for me, but in the ring, he ain't got no respect, and I hope he keeps that up and comes into the ring. I can't wait, because, you know, I'm going to knock him out. Neither can wait, mate. Congratulations well, and well done. Oliver, let's listen. I will not bother neither one of you. Two things you should remember. Obey my commands are most important. Protect yourself all the time. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Bruno looks absolutely huge in there in his red trunks. We're set to go. McCall is known for having the best chin in boxing history. He is virtually an immovable object in the ring and can absorb any punch. Bruno had to be prepared to go the full 12 round distance. Yet there's only an inch in height difference, but there's some several pounds in weight difference. The fight itself was pretty boring. Frank built up a lead in the first half of the fight and then did a lot of holding and spoiling in the second half. That's Frank Bruno's wife that's looking on. And there were some comments uh, earlier, all of them had made some comments about Frank being married to a white woman and it stirred up a bit of uh, ferocity and uh, so Frank Bruno said, I'm going to punish you when I get you in the ring. McCall couldn't really get to grips with the style of Frank. Land the big blow. A oh, big shot in there that time. The heads came together a little bit. Frank hanging on. It looked like Bruno was on his way to winning, but his stamina had failed him in the past and McCall started coming on strong in the championship rounds. An exhausted Bruno made it to the final bell, and he had finally achieved his dream, becoming a world champion. Bruno bought the boxing ring from this fight and kept it in his garden and slept in it. I've been dreaming for this. I persevered and I, I, I went with Frank Warren, and he gave me this opportunity in Don King, and I thank him. I thank George, I thank Keith, I thank my brother, I thank John Bloomfield, I thank Ruber, I thank Springs, I thank Lanzarote, I thank everybody that watching the television, and I thank my wife, I thank my mum, I thank everybody for taking the opportunity of standing behind me. And it was tough in there, but I done it, you know. I done you it, you I... confounded the critics, Frank, because they said you could never last 12 rounds, yeah. that your stamina would go, but you proved them wrong. I did. It was tough in there. It was tough, man, but I done it, you know. It's hard to, hard to sort of put it into words because I'm busted up at the moment, but I'm just over the moon, man. I'm happy, you know. Don't worry about, about that, Frank. It's an Tom, emotional I'm moment. Uncle Tom, man. No way. I love my brother. I, I'm, not, I'm not Uncle Tom. If I won the 10 million pound lottery today, it wouldn't mean as much as this to me because I've got my son and I've got the belt, you know. I, I'm just grateful. I, I haven't really sunk in. Uh, you can see why the people in England love that guy. In the final fight of his career, I thought Bruno looked scared of Mike Tyson in their second fight. The championship of the world. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any question, Mr. Tyson? Mr. Bruno, let's get it on. I think this was Tyson's best performance after he came out of prison. The belt. He'll be very anxious. Notice the head movement and coordination. That's the first one he talked to do anything, but it was a nice effort. And any time, oh, here comes Tyson. Tyson with a combination with 20 seconds left. Bruno came into the fight after having eye surgery, and he was cut by the end of round one. Well, he's not going to be here for 12 rounds, I guarantee you. Oh, a left cut by Mike Tyson, flush on the face of Frank Bruno. And a combination by Tyson, and Bruno holds on. In the third round, Tyson's awesome hand speed was just too much and completely overwhelmed Bruno. Laying it on, pouring it on, down goes Bruno into the ropes. And it is all over. It is all over here in round three. Mike Tyson is champion again. And that is it. Mike Tyson is back. The Tyson era. He's a good fighter, Mike Tyson couldn't take nothing away from him. I tried my best, but at the end of the day, my best wasn't um, good enough. Bruno retired after this fight and would never fight again. 
I'm glad he achieved his dream of becoming world champion. I think Bruno was an excellent fighter with big power in his fists. He had 38 knockouts in his 40 wins for an overall knockout percentage of 95%. That's pretty incredible. Apart from the Tyson fights, he was winning rounds and on top against his opponents, even in his losses. But I think his lack of stamina came into play and cost him. He showed against Lennox Lewis that he was a very good world-level fighter and was on his way to winning, but he got caught with a pretty lucky punch, I thought. The British public loved Bruno. He was an idol, and he is still loved today. I think Bruno is a very underrated guy. He was more than capable to being a dominant world champion if he fought in today's era. Fighting in an era with Lewis, Tyson, Bowie, and Holyfield was just unlucky. Frank showed tremendous heart and courage in his career and in his life, and I think he should be remembered as a man who never gave up. He kept trying and eventually got his dream. Huge heart, honest fighter, and remembered fondly as the London boy who dared to dream and finally achieved. You know what I mean? And all I can, I'm just trying to do something out of my life. I'd rather be a rebel, you know? And you get people knocking you and stabbing you and saying, no, he ain't one of us. He's trying to do this. He's trying to be a snob this. He's trying to be that. But I'm just a lit survivor. Like everybody out there listening or watching, just a survivor that's trying to do well out of life. 